What's up and welcome back to another video. Today we will be talking about all of the pearlescent weapons inside of Borderlands 2 and ranking them from worst to best. Now if you guys are not new to this series, this is just my opinion and my thoughts on these weapons as I have used them throughout the years inside of Borderlands 2. And if you guys do not agree with it, well that is your opinion. And please comment down below why you think I'm wrong and why I'm a big fat dumbass. And with that, let's hop into the video. One quick thing before we hop into the worst to best today, I just want to say that all of these pearl essence can be found through loot midgets, tubbies, or the binary boss. Those are the three best ways to find pearl essence weapons. You can also get them through chests and vending machines and things of that nature. But I'm sure you guys already knew that and you didn't need my dumbass to tell you. There's also raid bosses that can drop pearlescence. So just look out for them guys, you will find them, they are not that hard to get. And for anyone who's saying that they are hard to get, go try and play Borderlands 1, seriously. Coming in at our number 12 spot, we have the Wonderlust. I'm just gonna go ahead and get straight into it. You guys already know about this gun, I'm sure none of you are surprised. If you know the feeling of a Wonderlust dropping at your feet and walking up to that pearlescent glow and seeing this disappointment laying on the ground, I know we all have had that same sigh let out of our body. <sighs> because that's literally what I do every single time I see this thing. This gun is a pile of shit. When I tried to get gameplay for this thing, I don't think I killed a single enemy. And I'm not joking, you can't make this up. This thing is an E-Tech dart gun that shoots its projectiles and they float around and they're gonna lock onto your enemy it is just garbage it, it can come in any element there's no reason you should ever farm it just watch this gameplay i literally couldn't kill a thing and if there's a way you can use this thing if there's a way you can kill things with it please leave me six paragraphs of how to do it because i will try it if there's a way to kill something with the wanderlust i will try it just please let me know because i don't think there's a damn way in hell that you could kill a single skag not a bully monk Fuck, I'm not not even damn near Knuckle Dragger could take a single lick of damage to this damn thing. And coming in at our number 11 spot, we have a gun almost equally as bad, and it is manufactured by Jacobs. It is the Unforgiven. Oh god, here we go again, man. I can't even begin with these pearlescent weapons because they are almost all bad. Oh god, here we go, man. You guys said you wanted to see the pearlescent weapons ranked, and here we are. If I'm being honest with you people, the only guns I'd recommend farming are the top three. With that, let's move on with the Unforgiven. You would be able to think with this Unforgiven being a Jacob's weapon that you'd be able to fire the trigger as fast as you wanted. Well, no, Buttercup, you'd be wrong, because unfortunately, the Unforgiven legitimately locks and caps out your fire rate at a certain extent with each variant of the weapon that might drop for you. In the gameplay, you are seeing the absolute maximum fire rate of an Unforgiven, and yours is going to be similar, so no, you should not waste your time farming this piece of shit gun. Let's go ahead and move on, I've got nothing more to say, the gun is awful. Coming in at our number 10 spot, we have a sniper rifle manufactured by Malawan, and this one is one of the biggest disappointments of all time. Because a gun that has such a badass skin fits in with the pearlescent lore and has a name like the Storm, that's right ladies and gentlemen, it's the Storm, should not have been as bad as this buttload of f was. I'm just gonna get through this one quickly because I don't have much to say about it. It shoots off these big electric bolts that literally about break my skull anytime I see them go off. They're annoying. They're gonna electrocute you when you shoot this thing. They're gonna annoy the fuck out of you. You're, you're not gonna do any damn damage. You're gonna look like a fool if you bust this out in co-op. And if you get one, I recommend just tossing the son of a bitch off the cliff. Coming in at our number 9 spot, we have a sniper manufactured by Jacobs. And this one has a badass name and I'm so disappointed i'm so disappointed that it's landing right here man and it is the Godfinger. that is right if you guys have never had the pleasure or the displeasure whichever way you want to look at it to get this fine piece of a gun its entire gimmick is that it is only good at long ranges and that is the 
stupidest gimmick I think I've ever heard. So you literally need to be three football fields away to do damage with this damn gun. I'm not joking. The only person who's going to take damage to this thing is Face McShooty. I know I'm going to get a lot of shit for this video, but you know what? I'm just being honest about how I feel about the Borderlands 2 Pearl Essence. And if you don't agree, drop a dislike. YouTube already got rid of the dislike button, which pisses me off more than these Pearl Essence. But anyway, I just think anyone should be able to dislike a video. You should be able to express yourself on if you dislike or like something and I don't care if you guys disagree with my opinion that's what this is about it's about conversation it's about discussion debate talking talking to different people about your favorite hobbies and your favorite games all this kind of shit is why I am here giving my opinions so please shit on me all you want but yeah i've really got nothing more to say about the god finger it's a pile of shit and let's go ahead and just move on coming in at our number eight spot we have a rocket launcher manufactured by torg it is the tunguska now if you guys have not gotten this one to drop you're lucky because i think the troops back in world war ii had better fucking cannons than this thing because i think that's what it's trying to be a cannon it shoots out these like nuclear fucking rockets i don't even know how to explain it dude just watch the gameplay it hurts my head to use this and i'm i'm not even kidding it was hard to kill things with these first like uh let's say 12 through like six on the list that's literally half of the list here it was so hard and i mean so hard to get gameplay and i know there are builds that could easily improve some of these weapons but here's the thing i wanted to do it all on salvador he is the overall best character in the game now that does not mean that all of these guns are the best on salvador but what it does mean is that he has the best survivability durability and strength in the game at least in my opinion and i think that he was just the overall best character to test out all these guns on Plus, I don't care how strong your builds are, I don't think anyone could ever make the Tunguska a reliable weapon. And for that reason, it lands itself here, and I've really got nothing more to say about this piece of shit. You've got no reason to farm it, you got no reason to sit here and listen to me talk about it any longer, so that's about all I'm gonna say on it. Coming in at our number 7 spot, we have a weapon that some people are probably gonna hate on me for putting it right here. But I don't really care because I think the weapon is awful and it is the Stalker. This gun at first glance looks like a pretty badass Vladoff pistol, right? Kind of reminds you of like an anarchist or you know, a weapon like that. You know, the infinity pistol was a Vladoff pistol just like this one. So you're like, how bad can it be, right? And then you figure out the gimmick of the weapon and it is ricocheting bullets. What may sound good in your head doesn't always come good in full practice. That is what the Gearbox developers need to learn from this weapon. This gun's awful. Doesn't matter what elements you get on it. Doesn't matter if it's OP-10. Doesn't matter if you get it in normal mode. This gun's worth nothing more than the money that you're going to sell it to the vending machine for. Coming in at our number 6 spot, this is where we get into the slightly mediocre, well actually still super mediocre, to actually usable pearlescent weapons in the list so these next three i consider them pretty mediocre and you could probably figure out some builds with them but they're still not really reliable weapons but then the next three you actually could have some pretty strong builds with those guns and we'll get to them so with that out of the way coming in at our number six spot we have the bear cat that is right it is a doll assault rifle which is also not one of my favorite weapon types, but that is besides the point. It's not just because it's an assault rifle, it's because it's a dull assault rifle. I'm sorry, but it's not only that, but when I was using this gun, I could barely damn well see. All I could see was green goop all over my screen. I was barely doing any damage. My hand was getting tired because I was clicking the mouse so much and not doing any damage. I died a couple times while using this gun and we're halfway into the list. This is the number six gun and I was still dying while trying to get this gameplay. Do you realize how much of a problem that is? It's a problem to me. It should be a problem to you. If you get the Bearcat, just sell it. It's trash. Everything above it is a little bit better and I could see you wanting to keep it. But God, man, this these pearlescents are terrible. I don't know what else to say about it. Well, sure, there probably is a couple of scenarios where the Bearcat could be an all right weapon. I don't really care. There's much better guns to use than the Bearcat, Doll assault rifles included. The Veruk is a 10 times better and 10 times easier weapon to get than the Bearcat. 
Sorry, Bearcat, you have a cool name, and that is it, and we leave you there. Coming in at our number five spot, we have a gun with a way more badass name than it warrants, and that is the Saw Bar. Yep, a banded assault rifle, another gun that I couldn't give two fucks about. I just don't care about banded assault rifles, not in the least bit, whether it be a green one, a white one, a blue one, a purple one, an orange one, a pearlescent one, a serif one, I don't give a single shit. They are all bad. Every single banded assault rifle I've used, whether it was the chopper, the madhouse, the saw bar, it does not matter. But let's go ahead and talk about the saw bar because I have to so we can get on with the rest of this list. The saw bar has a huge clip just like all banded assault rifles, which is annoying in my opinion. It's going to burn through your ammo, but with the saw bar, let me tell you what you get. You're going to get it in a fire element every single time. And not only that, but the fire explosions that you get off this thing don't even really warrant its gimmick and it's kind of garbage. Just my opinion. Doesn't have to be yours. I don't got anything more to say. Coming in at our number four spot, we have a shotgun manufactured by Torg. And it is one that I have hated and hated ever since the first time I ever picked it up. And yes, this is the end of the hate train. The, the, the next three guns, I actually don't hate to an extent. I mean, just, just to an extent. It is the carnage. This thing pretty much is your standard Torg shotgun, but it has a super fast fire rate, at least in my case when I was using this thing. And it shoots off these like missiles that you can't really control. You can't really aim them anywhere. Sure, they do some all right to mediocre damage, but it's not a reliable weapon. It's honestly trash, and I honestly wish I could have put it lower on the list, but I couldn't. I literally couldn't warrant putting it any any like lower on the list. It's all the way up here at our number four spot, and it could easily be at the very bottom of a unique shotgun list. You see what I'm saying? I'm having a hard time coming up with a unique shotgun that I would like to use less than the Carnage. And it's our number four spot. Does that tell you anything about the pearlescence in the game? Sorry if I've been bitching a lot, but I just... I don't know, dude. These guns are just not my thing. And if there are any good builds or setups to use with the Carnage, please let me know down in the comments below, because it's definitely likely that I'm just an uneducated asshole who's rambling about nonsense. But I think I know a little bit more about the game than I let on, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and move on to our number three, because I don't want to talk about the Carnage anymore. Coming in at our number three spot, we have a submachine gun manufactured by TD, or it is the Avenger. While I was never too big a fan of this gun, that may be because I was never an Axton main back in the day, I was always into Salvador, Zero, and Maya. But maybe that was just me, but for those of you guys who used to rock Axton back in the day, or maybe even you still do, when you do your TD or throw reload, it would shoot bullets at the enemies, actually doing some pretty significant damage. But as you can see in the gameplay, this gun is trash on Salvador. And I admit, this gameplay is awful. I'm going to tell you guys, it is awful. And I apologize. It's going to hurt your eyes to watch. Because I don't have a max level accent on PC at the moment. And sometimes that's just how it goes. The Avenger can come in any element, and it is overall a pretty damn decent gun. Even though this gameplay is going to make it look like a pile of shit, I promise you if you're Axton or even there are some Krieg builds that you could use that can utilize this monster to perfection. So if you want to get any pearls, start with this one and then maybe go for number two or the number one on the list. Coming in at our number two spot, we have a shotgun manufactured by Hyperion. You guys already know what it is. It is the Butcher. Now I know a lot of you are going to criticize me for not putting this at our number one spot. But the number one gun can be used to an extent to where not even I can say that I have used it to that extent because I've never gotten one on an OP-10 or OP-8 Axton whenever that was the max level, of course. But what I can say for the Butcher is that I have gotten several while being max level, and this gun is a monster. I don't know how we go from all those shitters to this monster, but anyway, you've got it here. It's basically a quad shotgun, but it's Hyperion. Do I need to say anything else? I'd also recommend the practicable prefix if you guys are going for this monster with a, a, a matching grip as well. And then also look for whatever kind of element for whatever enemies you are going to be facing with said butcher. It can come in any element, including no element, which there's actually more of a chance that you're going to get no element on the drop. So just look out for that. It's all just a luck thing. RNG plays a big factor. But anyway, this is actually my favorite pearlescent on the list, even though it's not in my number one spot, it is still my favorite to use, and it's the most exciting one to get. I'm sure a lot of you guys are going to agree with me on that, 
and this is one of the one pro lessons that I haven't butchered do you get my joke on the list yeah I know that joke was horrible but anyway coming in with our number one spot we have an assault rifle manufactured by Jacobs and it is the Becca now I know there's got to be some of you that know the power of this thing because that's not like I'm the only person who's played Axton but here's the thing I have never gotten it on Axton and I have seen gameplay of it on Axton and it is a fucking tank and I did alright with it here on Salvador in the gameplay but it doesn't even do it justice you guys need to go out there right now and check out some builds on Axton of people using this weapon it is an absolute ad slaying machine and there's no reason why you shouldn't go pick one up and unlike the Unforgiven you can actually fire this one as fast as you pull the trigger and I also think the skins really badass maybe that's just because my favorite colors always been purple but what the hell I think it's a sick looking gun regardless and it does some decent DPS and for all those reasons it lands right here at our number one spot and if you want to get any of these pearlescent weapons on the list you guys know how to do it the tubbies loot midgets or the binary boss those are your three main ways unless you're going for a chest farm or something of that sort and with that I've got nothing more to say about these pearlescents I would not recommend farming any of them if I'm telling you the truth unless you're going for a butcher but uh, the Becca's cool too, if you're an Axton, like I said. But I wouldn't recommend farming 12 through 4. That's just my personal opinion. I'm sure some of you guys have your little niche reasons why the Tunguska is the best gun in the game. But uh, I don't know, man. I think our opinions are too far off and we'd probably never be friends in the real world. But with that being mine, you guys are still my fans. I love you all and thank you for supporting me. Like this video. Subscribe if you're new. And I hope you all enjoyed it. And with that, I will see you guys in the next one.